Spiral Knights is coming up on their 10 year anniversary, and after a bit of self reflection and a few silent bounds of self motivation, I wanted to present my top 5 reasons for either starting to play or continuing to play Spiral Knights in 2021. So without further ado, presenting 5 good reasons to play SK in 2021. Number 5. Free. Though the format has changed over time, the depths of the clockworks are free to explore with the only cost being time. Coming from a player who played 4 characters from start to 5 star, I've noticed there's minimal grinding until one hits the 4 star mark and wishes to make the leap to 5 star. One of my characters was actually built with the intent at staying 4 star just to see if it was a viable strategy in lockdown, as 4 star weapons do about 85% of the damage a fully heated 5 star weapon does. In life, one of the general rules is that if you wish for quality, then you have to pay for it. Spiral Knights is a small DLC mission, but most of the in-game purchases are of cosmetic value. If you wish, you can spend money to accelerate heat or gain massive amounts of CE, but rushing past the intended pace runs the risk of being purely objective-oriented rather than enjoying the environment you're in. There are prize boxes that drop seasonal or theme-based accessories, with the rare weapon, armor, or shield included. Generally, the items that can be tempered in the game are just as powerful. The weapon slots, trinket slots, and variants can all be purchased by in-game currency, so one can enjoy the full in-game experience without spending a dime. Though there is a huge in-game market that deals with cosmetics, a lot of end-game players simply enjoy chatting in Haven and showing off their flair. Number 4. Completed Game Spiral Knights has changed hands as far as owners go, so the vision no doubt has changed as well. I won't spoil the ending for the game, but it's a bit open-ended, and there are hints that the story should go on in a vague sense. From an outside perspective, I can understand how code is difficult to learn, especially if you did not write it, so continuing an already pre-written game would be extra challenging. That being said, the content we do have is still quite enjoyable. We receive minor game fixes and surprises in the clockworks as time passes, and there is a set cycle of seasoned events. With everything from a spooky Halloween setting, snow in Haven around the Christmas season, and a whole lot of cupcakes around Spiral Knight's birthday. The cosmetic alterations and obtainable prize boxes still add a hint of newness to the game. There are regular set missions to run, as well as the ever-changing clockworks, my personal favorite, danger rooms, bosses, prestige missions, shadow layers, etc. for advanced difficulty. This is not counting the personal challenges the community has given itself with speed runs, etc. Number 3. Multiplayer and Active Parties in the Clockworks are up to 4 people max with no friendly fire and the monster difficulty scales based on the number of players, making each player significant. One can choose to focus on a mixture of swords, bombs, or guns, while the endgame players don their black cat gear and demonstrate strength in all functions. A built-in party finder is there so one can help out their fellow knight in many games of Blast Network and Lockdown for those that wish a more competitive feel. Though the Spiral Knights forum might seem rarely touched, the Discord server is quite active and there are still live streams being conducted to help with hype and connection. Though PvP can be seen as endgame for a lot of games, I think one falls short of enjoying Spiral Knights if one invests a lot of their time or identity in that path of SK. The true beauty lies in the cooperative atmosphere of the Clockworks, as there are still many exploited bugs in the PvP system. Not to mention the connection advantages and disadvantages with it being programmed in Java and having a limited amount of server locations. This is coming from a player who probably spent half his time in lockdown. The limited updates we have gotten are more for player enjoyability in the clockworks, sometimes at a negative cost to the lockdown community. Number 2. No Agenda So how do you guys like 2020? I don't even want to touch on some of the things we've gone through like masks, lockdowns, gender and race debates that seem to do nothing but pour oil on fire. One couldn't access their Netflix or Amazon account without seeing recommendations that seemed very mismatched based on what one was actually watching. Everything media-driven seems political, with an abandonment of the ideological. We are certainly entitled to our own views, but can we not enjoy a fantasy venue without unwanted hot-button issues tossed in the package? Spiral Nights provides quite a magical, steampunk-like environment, with the theme being you're stranded, but you're not alone. Nothing that pushes through the computer screen screaming for or against social values. In Haven, we are united with a sense of purpose out of necessity, with our cosmetic appeal being our strongest visual attraction method or rejection method. It's family friendly with a language filter, a young age requirement, no sensual appeal to grab at the eyes, and no blood, just tiny little rectangles that fly off a person when you're hit. 
is if you're made of a bunch of magic cards or something. Since my computer is in a public area in the house and my four and nine year olds stop by to watch often, this is an ideal experience we can all enjoy. And number one, nostalgia. Nostalgia is defined as a sentimental longing or wistful affection for the past, typically for a period or place with happy personal associations. Dude, this game is 10 years old, and people like myself remember the first few years of the game and watching it grow. The whole atmosphere seems to hug you. The music, the cute graphics, fantasy, magic, and technology are well put together. As human, our existential nature has us always longing for other worlds, and Spiral Knights does an awesome job of immersing us in that nature. From showing off in Haven, high damage numbers in Lockdown, or speed grinding Vanaduke, it's easy to put yourself through the screen to be among friends with a common sense of purpose. Remembering a time when you might have been 10 years younger. I still have pictures of my first daughter sitting on my lap as an infant watching me play. Oftentimes it's not the objective game itself, but the journey one took while there. And on reflection, one only realizes the beauty of the journey during the postscript. When asking around my guildmates on Discord, this was the number one reason. They play because their other friends do, and it's bound to put nostalgia. Various places in life and fantasy remind you of the experience. When the experience during your life on Earth rhymes with the past, you're reminded of the place in life and fantasy you once visited and the feeling of joy you had that permeated the experience without and within. For some, that feeling is perhaps meals with family or friends. Others, it's the closest of a new pet or a memory of an old one. And others, it's the familiar sound of Haven's theme with the ambiance of running water we can never drink. The people we play with are other ships on the sea of mortality. And from time to time, it's nice to sail beside a familiar ship on a familiar sea. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the clockworks.